What's up everyone, Pentest here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that gets a lot of attention both good and bad, Wi-Fi security. Specifically, we're going to take a look under the hood at the top 10 free tools that are out there, security professionals and yes, hackers use to test and sometimes break into wireless networks. Now before we jump in, let's get the big important disclaimer out of the way. This video is purely for educational and informational purposes. I'm showing you these tools so you can understand the vulnerabilities that exist and how to better protect your own networks. Using these tools to access any network you don't own or have explicit permission to test is illegal, and seriously, don't do it. We're all about ethical use and learning here so let's keep it that way. The goal here is to demystify the world of wireless penetration testing. We'll break down what makes each tool powerful, packet sniffing, password cracking, automated attacks. Think of it as a deep dive into the toolbox of a digital locksmith. By the end of this, you'll have a much clearer picture of the landscape of Wi-Fi security and the software that defines it. So, with that said, let's get into the top 10 free Wi-Fi hacking tools. Alright, kicking things off at number 1, we have to talk about Aircrack Ang. If you've ever read a single article or watched a video about Wi-Fi security, this is the name you've seen. It's not just one tool, but a whole suite of them, and it's pretty much the gold standard for auditing wireless networks. The suite includes tools for capturing packets, replaying traffic, cracking WEP, cracking WPA, cracking WPA2 PSK keys. It's a command line interface which might seem intimidating at first, but it offers a level of control that guy-based tools just can't match. The core function that makes Aircrack Ong so famous is its ability to crack passwords. It does this by first capturing a WPA handshake. This is the data exchanged when a device connects to a router. Once you have that handshake, Aircracking can run a dictionary attack against it, trying thousands or even millions of potential passwords from a word list until it finds a match. It's a brute force method for sure, but it's incredibly effective, especially against weak or common passwords. Beyond just password cracking, the other tools in the suite like AeroDump Eng and AirPlaying are what make it so versatile. You can use them to de-authenticate a client from a network, forcing them to reconnect and allowing you to capture that all-important handshake. But once you get the hang of it, you realize why Aircrack Aang is the foundational tool that so many security professionals learn first. It's powerful, it's effective, and it teaches you the fundamentals of how Wi-Fi security works, and how it can be broken. Its popularity isn't just hype, it's earned through years of being one of the most effective and comprehensive free tools available for analyzing and cracking Wi-Fi networks. It's a classic for a reason. Next up is a tool that's a personal favorite of mine, not just for security, but for understanding networks in general. Wireshark. This one is a little different from Aircrack Eng. It's not an attack tool in the same way. Instead, Wireshark is a packet sniffer or a network protocol analyzer. Think of it like a microscope for your network traffic. It lets you capture and inspect every single piece of data, every packet, in real time. It's an incredibly powerful diagnostic tool used by network administrators, developers, security analysts. Its power comes from its ability to provide an insane level of detail. When you're capturing traffic, Wireshark breaks down each packet, showing you the source, destination, protocol being used, HTTP, DNS, TCP, and even the raw data payload. For Wi-Fi security, this is huge. On an open, unencrypted network, Wireshark can show usernames, passwords, website data in plain text. Never use public Wi-Fi for sensitive tasks without a VPN. It just lays everything bare. For a security professional, Wireshark is indispensable. After capturing traffic, maybe with air cracking, load that capture into Wireshark to dissect it. Filter for specific traffic types. Follow TCP streams to reconstruct client-server conversations. Identify suspicious activity that might indicate an attack. It's about understanding the network at a fundamental level. A tool for investigation and reconnaissance. It's a deep tool that makes the invisible visible, a staple in any tech pro's toolkit. At number three, we have Kismet. If Wireshark is the microscope, Kismet is the wide-angle telescope for the wireless world. It's a wireless network detector sniffer intrusion detection system. Unlike other tools that focus on a single network, Kismet is designed to find and identify all the wireless networks around you. It passively listens to the airwaves, picking up not just standard Wi-Fi access points, hidden networks, those that don't broadcast their SSID, and even other wireless devices like Bluetooth gadgets, some wireless keyboards, and more. What makes Kismet stand out is its passive nature. It doesn't send out any packets to probe for networks, it just listens. 
It quietly collects information about every network it sees, the SSID, the MAC address, BSSID, the encryption type being used, WEP, WPA, WPA2, signal strength, and which clients are connected to which network. It basically builds a complete map of the wireless environment around you. Beyond just detection, Kismet has powerful intrusion detection, or IDS, features. It can be configured to alert you to suspicious activity. For example, it can detect other tools that are actively probing the network, identify de-authentication attacks in progress, or spot rogue access points that might be set up for man-in-the-middle attacks. It acts as a silent guardian, watching the airwaves for signs of trouble. Kismet runs on Linux, MacOS, and even Windows under the WSL. It has a web-based UI that you can access from any browser, which makes visualizing the data it collects much easier. It's a comprehensive suite for anyone serious about understanding and securing the wireless spectrum. Coming in at number 4 is a tool that became famous for exploiting a very specific and at one time very common vulnerability, Reaver. This tool doesn't bother with dictionary attacks or capturing handshakes in the same way Aircrack Ung does. Instead, Reaver targets a feature called Wi-Fi Protected Setup, or WPS. WPS was designed to make it easy for non-technical users to connect new devices to their router, usually by pressing a button or entering a short pin. The idea was good, but the implementation had a major security flaw. The flaw lies in how the 8-digit WPS pin is validated. Instead of checking all 8 digits at once, many routers would check the first 4 digits then the last 4. This drastically reduces the number of possibilities you need to guess. The first half has only 10,000 combinations. The second half has only 1,000, since the last digit is a checksum. So, instead of 100 million possible 8-digit pins, an attacker only has to guess a maximum of 11,000 combinations. Reaver automates this brute force attack. It systematically tries every possible pin combination until it finds the correct one. Once it discovers the WPS pin, it can then use that to recover the router's full WPA or WPA2 passphrase, regardless of how long or complex that passphrase is. Now it's important to note that this attack is much less effective today. Most modern routers have protections against this, like rate limiting. Reaver serves as a powerful reminder that even a well-intentioned feature designed for convenience can introduce a massive security hole. At the halfway point number 5, we have Wi-Fi. If you've looked at tools like Aircrack Eng, then Wi-Fi is the tool for you. Wi-Fi is essentially a wrapper and automated script Aircrack Eng suite, Reaver, and it simplifies the entire process of auditing a wireless network down to just a few key presses. It's designed for ease of use and speed. You run the script and it immediately starts scanning for all the wireless networks in range. It presents a clean numbered list, SSID, signal strength, encryption type, and number of clients. From there you just type the number of the network you want to target. Wi-Fi then takes over, automatically launching the best attack based on the network's configuration. If it detects a network using old weak web encryption, it will automatically launch the appropriate attack to crack the key in minutes. If it's a WPA or WPA2 network, it will try to capture a handshake and can even run a basic dictionary attack for you, and if it detects that the target has WPS enabled, it will automatically launch a Reaver-style attack to try and brute force the pin. It does all of this with minimal user interaction, providing real-time feedback on its progress. It's the set it and forget it of Wi-Fi hacking. Because of its simplicity, Wi-Fi is often criticized by seasoned security professionals for being a script kitty tool. However, it's also an incredibly efficient tool for penetration testers who need to quickly assess multiple networks. Next up at number 6 is Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. This tool brings a graphical user interface to wireless security testing. Many powerful tools like Aircrack Ong are command line based and intimidating. Fern hides that complexity behind a point-and-click interface. It's written in Python and uses the Qt GUI library. Launch Fern and you're greeted with a simple window. Select your wireless interface. Enable monitor mode. Start scanning for networks. Fern shows a list of available networks. Highlight a web network. Highlight a WPA network. Select your target and pick the attack type. Options include web attacks, WPA slash WPA2 attacks, capture handshake, WPA slash WPA2 attacks, run dictionary, progress, WPS based attacks. Fern gives strong visual feedback, shows associated clients, shows a handshake captured indicator. Dictionary attacks show a progress bar and ETA. It even includes a built-in database of common router passwords. 
Fern removes command line guesswork and feels like a desktop app. Great for beginners and visual learners. Pros may prefer the command line but Fern makes these tools accessible. It puts a friendly face on powerful back-end tools and lowers the barrier to entry. At number 7 we're talking about something a bit different. It's not a single tool, but an entire operating system. Kali Linux. You absolutely cannot have a conversation about hacking or cybersecurity without mentioning Kali. Developed and maintained by Offensive Security, Kali is a Debian-based Linux distribution that comes pre-installed with hundreds of security tools. A huge portion of those are dedicated to wireless attacks. Think of Kali Linux as the ultimate toolbox. Instead of you having to go out and find, download, install, configure all the tools we've talked about so far, Kaylee has them all ready to go right out of the box. It solves dependency and configuration headaches for you. Run it from a live USB stick, install on your hard drive, or run it in a virtual machine. For Wi-Fi hacking specifically, Kaylee is a beast. It has drivers for a wide range of wireless cards that support monitor mode and packet injection. The Kali Linux Wireless Meta Package bundles dozens of tools, big names, and obscure specialized ones. You have everything for reconnaissance, sniffing, spoofing, password cracking, and analyzing wireless protocols all in one environment. It streamlines the workflow of a wireless security audit. Kali isn't a single hacking tool, it's the platform where hacking happens. If you're serious, getting familiar with Kali Linux is not just recommended, it's pretty much essential. Coming in at number 8. A bit of a throwback but one that played a huge role in Wi-Fi discovery, NetStumbler. This tool is Windows only, one of the first easy-to-use Wi-Fi finders. Its primary purpose was what became known as war driving, driving around and mapping access points. Back in the early 2000s, Wi-Fi was new and often unsecured. NetStumbler detects 802.11a, NetStumbler detects 802.11b, NetStumbler detects 802.11g. It actively sends out probe requests and listens for responses. As it finds networks it logs their SSID, it logs their MAC address, it logs the channel, and whether they have encryption enabled, specifically, WEP. It was famous for its ability to integrate with a GPS device, allowing users to automatically log coordinates and create a physical map of wireless coverage. Compared to modern tools like Kismet, NetStumbler is very limited. It hasn't been updated in many years, it doesn't support WPA2 or WPA3, and it doesn't work with many modern Wi-Fi cards. It's an active scanner, not stealthy like Kismet. However, its historical significance is huge. It helped show the public just how many wireless networks were out there and how many of them were completely open and unsecured. NetStumbler is a piece of Wi-Fi history, a veteran that paved the way for modern tools. At number 9, we have Cowpatty. This tool has a very specific and focused purpose. It's designed to conduct an offline dictionary attack against WPA, WPA2 networks. It's similar in concept to the cracking function within Aircrack Eng, but it takes a slightly different approach that can be more efficient. The name itself is a play on Cowpatty and WPA, Hacker Community Vibe. It's a command line tool, and it's all about cracking that password. Like Aircrack Eng, Cowpatty requires you to have already captured a valid WPA handshake. Once you have that capture file you feed it to Cowpatty, and you also feed it a word list file, a big text file of potential passwords. Cowpatty then goes through the list, one word at a time, checking each word. Where it differs, is an early technique to speed things up using pre-computed hash files. The slow part is calculating the pairwise master key, or PMK for each potential password. Cowpatty lets you pre-compute these hashes for your dictionary against a specific SSID, this generates a massive hash file but once generated, attacks run much faster. It's basically the rainbow table concept applied to WPA PSK. It's a trade-off between time and storage space. Aircrack Eng later added similar optimizations but Cowpatty was a pioneer. And finally, rounding out our list at number 10 is Airgeddon. This tool is a bit like Wi-Fi on steroids. It's a multi-use bash-based script for auditing wireless networks. What sets it apart is the sheer breadth of features and modular design. A massive script with dozens of attacks, all in a slick text-based menu. Feels like a complete self-contained penetration testing suite. Airgeddon can do almost everything we've mentioned. It can put your card into monitor mode. It can scan for targets. It can launch a whole host of attacks. Modes include capturing handshakes, running dictionary and brute force attacks, launching WPS pin attacks. It also creates fake access points evil twin attacks. It can run captive portal attacks, it can perform de-authentication floods. Despite being command line, it's interactive and user-friendly. 
It guides you through each step and explains options. It checks for required tools with install help. It automates complex attack chains. Example, the Evil Twin module auto-sets the fake AP. It auto-sets the captive portal. It auto-starts the sniffer to capture credentials. For a quick comprehensive wireless audit, AirGeddon is one of the most impressive free tools today. So there you have it, a deep dive into 10 of the most powerful and popular free tools used for Wi-Fi security testing. From the foundational Aircrack Ang suite to the all-in-one automation of AirGeddon, each tool offers a unique window into the vulnerabilities of the wireless world we all depend on. Understanding how these tools work is the first step toward building stronger, more secure networks. It shows you that a long, complex password is a must, why you should disable WPS, and why you should be very careful on public Wi-Fi. Again, and I really can't stress this enough, this video and the information in it are for educational purposes only. The goal is to arm you with knowledge, not to encourage illegal activity. Using these tools on any network that you do not own or have explicit, written permission to test is against the law and can have some pretty serious consequences. Please be responsible. Use this knowledge to protect yourself and to learn about the fascinating field of cybersecurity ethically. The power of these tools should be respected, and they should only be used to build things up, not to tear them down. I hope you found this breakdown useful. Have you ever used any of these tools for legitimate testing on your own network? Are there any other tools you think should have made the list? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.